Nothing stands between man and the fulfillment of his dreams but facts, and facts are the creations of imagining. If man changes his imagining, he will change the facts. Man and his past are one continuous structure. This structure contains all of the facts which have been conserved and still operate below the threshold of his surface mind. For him, it is merely history. For him, it seems unalterable, a dead and permanently fixed past. But for itself, it is living. It is part of the living age. We cannot leave behind us the mistakes of our past, for nothing disappears. Everything that has been is still in existence. The past still exists, and it gives and still gives its results. Man must go back in memory, seek for and destroy the causes of evil however far back they lie. This going into the past and replaying a scene of the past in imagination as it ought to have been played the first time, I call revision. And revision results in repeal. Changing our lives means changing the past. The causes of the present evil are the unrevised scenes of the past. The past and the present form the whole structure of man. It is carrying all of its contents with it. Any alteration of content will result in an alteration in the present and future. Live nobly so that mind can store a past well worthy of recall. Should you fail to do so, remember, the first act of correction or cure is always revise. If the past is recreated into the present, so will the revised past be recreated into the present. Or else, the promise that though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, is a lie. The question may arise as to how by representing others to ourselves as better than they really were, or mentally rewriting a letter to make it conform to our wish, or by revising the scene of an accident, the interview with the employer, and so on, could change what seems to be the unalterable facts of the past. But remember my claims for imagining. Imagining creates reality. What it makes, it can unmake. It is not only conservative, building a life from images supplied by memory, it is also creatively transformative, altering a theme already in being. The parable of the unjust steward gives the answer to this question. We can alter our world by means of a certain illegal practice, by means of a falsification of the facts, that is, by means of a certain intentional alteration of that which we have experienced, and all this is done in one's own imagination. This is a form of falsehood which not only is not condemned, but is actually approved in the gospel teaching. By means of such a falsehood, a man destroys the causes of evil and acquires friends, and on the strength of this revision, proves, judging by the high praise the unjust steward received from his master, that he is deserving of confidence. Because imagining creates reality, we can carry revision to the extreme and revise a scene that would be otherwise unforgivable. We learn to distinguish between man, who is all imagination, from those states into which he may enter. An unjust steward, looking at another's distress, will represent the other to himself as he ought to be seen. Were he himself in need, he would, like the man on the cover of this record, enter his dream house in his imagination and imagine what he would see and how things would seem and how people would act after these things should be. Then in this state he would fall asleep, feeling the way he would expect to feel under such circumstances. Would that all the Lord's people were unjust towards, mentally falsifying the facts of life to deliver individuals forevermore. For the imaginal change goes forward until at length the altered pattern is realized on the heights of attainment. Our future is our imaginal activity in its creative march. Imagine better than the best you know.